So sim racing definitely isn't a cheap hobby. It can get really expensive. Today's video, however, is about sim racing on a budget, something I have quite a bit of experience of. Now one free tip straight away. If you become a premium member from race department, you can actually get discounts on different setups. For instance, Simacube, Mozo Racing, Track Racer, GT Omega, and of course, Simlab products. It's a 5% discount. Now, of course, if you buy a wheel like this, that's 15 euros, it's already pretty much paid back. So become a member and start saving straight away. Either way, let's start the video and talk about some setups that I think are definitely worth that price and can get you started in sim racing. And who knows, maybe in the future, get some other gear. Either way, let's jump into the video. Now let's start with the wheel that I'm using that is set up on my desk. I'm using the Thrustmaster T300. It's a fine wheel, you can actually also remove the steering wheel, though I do have some feedback about how that works because often it actually doesn't stick that well and you just have to screw the wheel again because it just doesn't want to stick that well. But either way, you can actually remove the wheel itself and change it with, for instance, an F1 wheel or so on. There are a lot of options out there on what you can pick and of course put on there. If you do want to go for a low budget, I think for instance the T150 is also a really good option. But if you do want to have exchangeable steering wheels with a Thrustmaster wheel, the T300 is the one that it starts with. Not of course with the T150. That one sadly is stuck so you cannot exchange the wheels itself. Now of course there are some cheaper options from Thrustmaster and with Thrustmaster you always get a pedal and brake with it. Depending on which version you can also have a version where you get the clutch with it. My version of the Thrustmaster T300 doesn't actually have a clutch with it. However I did buy of course a separate set because honestly if you want to have a good brake pedal I wouldn't necessarily recommend Thrustmaster. The ones that you get with them are decently fine but they're not that great. Yes there are ways that you can of course rig it where you have a system behind it but honestly I wouldn't necessarily recommend the ones that you get with Thrustmaster. However, if you are starting, why not? It works well enough. It's just not going to be as precise as of course some other pedal sets that you have. As stated in the intro, sim racing can be very expensive, but there are ways to save money. Ways to get a great experience, though of course it won't be perfect. But let's start talking about my setup. Firstly, I have a Thrustmaster T300 RS. With this, of course, you have a complete set of the wheelbase and, of course, the wheel and pedals itself. But those pedals I definitely replaced with the Thrustmaster T LCM. These pedals are spring loaded. The reason I bought them is simple. These are spring loaded, allowing more precise movement of my feet itself. It's harder to press them in, and especially for the brake itself. I just feel like I can be far more precise and if I want to have a heavier brake I simply change the springs around and I can have a heavier or lighter brake depending on my needs. For me I simply noticed a big advantage in that. So what did I pay for it? For the wheel set I have paid 259 euros though the price has gone up to about 300 to 350 euros. For the pedals itself I paid around 250 euros as well. This means that the total price was just a bit over 500 euros. Now when you compare that to people who simply pay a few thousand dollars for a complete set, then yeah the price is much lower and far more reasonable even more so if you are starting out. If you can and you have enough space though, I would definitely recommend a rig. A rig allows for a more consistent setup during your racing and hot lap and so on. It allows far less movement of the whole set, where of course when you set it up on a desk, it all just depends on the kind of desk that you have and it will move around. And of course, you can truly get in a position that you need, allowing more confidence during the racing itself. Sitting straight is really important. If you are slightly turned and your hands are not properly placed on the wheel itself, it already affects your racing ability. Simply put, you just cannot move as confident as you would normally. Rotating further, for instance, is definitely noticeable if you don't have your hands straight on the wheel itself. And this is where bricks simply come in. For instance, you can get a GT Omega Titan kit, well of course you need a seat next to that, but you can buy that set itself for 290 euros and with a seat for 440 euros. But if you are a premium member from race department, 
you actually get a discount, that 5% we talked about before, saving you 22 euros on a version with the seat, now costing 418 euros, and without the seat, 275 euros. So that still means that you are under a thousand euros if you have the same setup as I do. But if you are starting, a setup like mine simply works well. There are just things that you need to keep in mind. Simply put, if you don't have a rig and you want to start cheap, wheels like the Thrustmaster T150 and of course the T300 are great ways to get in sim racing. Make sure however that you have a seat with four legs, allowing you to stay put and not move around. And also make sure that there's something behind the pedals as well, so that they don't move around. With this kind of setup and you have your desk, it's about 200 to 350 euros, depending on which wheel you get. Simply put, if you want to start sim racing, it doesn't have to be expensive. The more you pay, the more you can get out of it. But if you are starting, I don't see why you should start straight away with a drag drive wheel. I would advise just starting off with something like my Trustmaster T300 RS. It works well enough and for a starter, it's definitely a great kit to have. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this new video and of course, let me know what wheel you are using and which one you would advise. Of course, I haven't tested every single wheel that is out there, so I'm curious what you think is a great wheel and a great combo for starters. Either way, I'm Jermaine for Race Department, I hope you enjoyed this video and of course stay tuned for more content.